Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be going over the updated Vividino or Formbot Trudon, uh, and this one has been updated with a direct drive. So about seven or so months ago, we reviewed and unboxed a uh, Trudon. And the Trudon from Vividino was a Bowden drive system. So the uh, extruder was on the back, back here, and then the Bowden tube fed it through um, to the hot end. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, it would be helpful if you check that out in the description below. Overall, what we're looking at here is very much a Voron style printer. Um, there's some significant differences uh, to the way that it does bed leveling compared to what you may be used to and what we usually show on the channel here. Uh, it actually levels the XY gantry so that it's coplanar to the bed itself. Uh, what I mean by that is each corner is independently controlled by a motor, so it can actually raise or lower the corners independently as it goes and probes the bed, making sure that this is parallel with this. And so then the topography or the mesh that we build of the bed uh, is really just to deal with any concaveness of the bed surface itself. Um, and when we're moving around the, the X, Y coordinates, we don't have that Z micro stepping to, uh, to deal with a, an out of uh, plane bed. Um, there would still be some micro stepping if you had a crazy concave in your, in your bed surface or something, um, but it's, it's significantly reduced uh, and that should result in better uh, print quality and also you'd be able to print faster. Um, speaking of printing faster, you can already go pretty fast on the, uh, on the Bowden drive version of this. Now, typically with a direct drive, we have all this additional weight of a motor uh, on the hot end itself. Uh, and that usually causes us to slow down to maintain the same level of print quality. Uh, in this case, they've used a very light um, direct drive hot end. So the, the motor here and the gear assembly is only about 170 grams or so. Uh, and the motor is extremely small in comparison to the standard stepper motor you'd be used to seeing. Even the pancake stepper motors are much heavier and larger than that guy. So let's go over some of the key features here on the printer. All around we have Gates belts, um, which are labeled as Gates power grip. Uh, and that's great because the belts are extremely long, especially in the uh, in the X and Y directions. Uh, those belts meander all the way around. Uh, they're probably close to two meters long or so. Um, we have a PEI um, build surface that is laminated to a spring steel magnetic um, build plate. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the build plate itself doesn't move. It's stationary and the gantry just moves up and down. Other changes from the original Trudon include a um, acrylic plate around the hot end, which used to be some sort of board type material. So it's a little firmer. And a significant departure is that they're using stainless steel rails. So they're using uh, a nine millimeter rail on the X and a 12 millimeter rail everywhere else. So that would be on each of the four corners and in the Y direction on either side. Um, apparently users had some issues with the previous rails rusting. Um, now, hardened steel will rust, um, so I guess the idea is that stainless steel is less prone to rust, um, especially if you are spraying stuff in here, like you might be cleaning off glue stick or something, spraying some water to do so instead of cleaning it outside of the printer. Uh, I could see that that extra moisture and humidity could pose a risk of rust. Um, everything else is pretty much uh, aluminum, other than obviously the bolts themselves. In the back, just like the original, we have a HEPA filter, um, that is meant to uh, suck air in through the cracks of the acrylic panels uh, and exhaust it out the back, filtering any particulate that might exist in that airflow. Um, they have upgraded that fan to a Delta fan. It's very much the same type of fan they would use for exhausting heat out of a, out of a server cabinet or something to that effect, um, which is great because that's a very high static pressure situation. You're trying to suck air through a, a very dense media like that, uh, and upgrading that fan uh, will make that definitely much more efficient. We have a very large touch screen on the front. It's because unlike many of the printers we show here, we're not using Marlin firmware. We're using uh, a Duet Wi-Fi board, which is running RepRap firmware. And so this is a cloned Duet Wi-Fi board uh, with a PanelDo uh, touchscreen. Um, and so you can 
configure everything through here. Uh, it's a very different configuration uh, and configuration uh, process than Marlin is. Uh, you know, if we want to make key parameter changes in the firmware, we have to change the code, recompile the firmware and re-upload. And with RepRap, you can literally make the parameter change, reboot, and it will get reloaded. Um, so that's kind of cool. So on the extruder itself, this is where the, the drive mechanism is. If we release this tension on the lever, we can see one of the gears and the other gear is tucked in under here. So it's dual drive, much like a Bontech style where the two gears um, mesh together. So one gear is driven by the small motor on the back here, and then the other gear is driven by the first. Um, so grabbing the filament from both sides gives you a very firm grip on the filament. You should have no slippage whatsoever. And then this motor style that they've used is a lot lighter than um, the traditional motors, stepper motors. So if we remove the four screws that are holding on this uh, shroud here, which holds on to the dual cooling fans on either side, part cooling fans, slide this guy out of the way. We reveal a E3D V6 cloned hot end with silicone sock on it, uh, this tiny fan that they normally come with. And then on the back here, hopefully you can see we have the BL Touch tucked directly behind. And so the BL Touch is directly in line with the nozzle, it's just a few millimeters behind. This is a very simple offset. So I'd like to reiterate that this was not an in-depth review of this printer. Um, we did that before, where we're just kind of highlighting some of the key changes that they've made to this revision. Um, so if you want to see the original video, check out the link in that description below. We go into a lot more depth. What we did do though, is print off some sample prints. So this one here is off the SD cards. This was sliced at the factory. We do see a pretty prominent Z seam. They've lined it up. Um, if I was using Cura, I'd probably choose sharpest corner. Um, and hopefully the Z seam would line up with this kind of 90 degree corner on the uh, cape, I guess, or dress there. Um, but this turned out okay. A tiny bit of under extrusion here, right at the top of the head. Um, and it almost looks like the beginning of each line, there's a slight bit of under extrusion. So that could be the slicing settings that they used. Um, might want to add extra restart or maybe change the retraction amount. We'll have to see. But we sliced a couple ourselves. So we've got this Yoda bust and uh, we don't have that issue at all on this. Um, this turned out good. Um, not a whole lot to talk about there. Uh, the cooling is very effective, having the two fans, one on either side. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter which way you're traveling, you're getting the part adequately cooled. And then, honestly, I don't even know what this is. Um, Lee in the shop here, he sliced this up. Uh, but this also turned out very good. Um, there's a couple small spots here, uh, little zits, so at the start and stop points. I think he's using uh, Simplify uh, and random start and stop points. Um, so we could probably tune that in a little bit more. I'm not faulting the machine for that at all. And of course, being PEI and PLA, these things stick like glue and release nice and easy when it cools. And with that spring steel, you've got some flex there to help pop those off without having to scrape at them with a scraper and potentially damage your print surface. So hopefully you found all that useful. Remember to like and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when we upload more videos. Thanks for watching. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, you right there. Whoa. Okay.